Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to join the Patreon to vote for your favorite crystal gem, and like and subscribe for more generous friends next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Dr. Facilier, the Shadow Man from Princess and the Frog. If you haven't seen the movie, go do it, it's incredibly underrated. But to be clear, Dr. Facilier is not a real doctor, it's just a name like Dr. Pepper or Dr. Gwyneth Paltrow. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need friends who will help us make other friends that we're actually going to be hustling. Next, we need the hustle with showmanship to really sell selling your soul. Finally, frogs. We need to make people frogs and that's really high level magic actually. Hopefully our benefactors are cool with us paying them back later. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just make sure your charisma is high, which should be pretty easy. It's gonna be our top stat after all. You need to make deals and the things you're dealing with aren't always normal people. Dexterity next, sleight of hand is important for you and you don't need otherworldly power just for card tricks. Intelligence after that, voodoo is a form of magic and you understand it, that's arcana. Follow that up with constitution, even when your plan is falling apart, you're pretty good at keeping your composure. Wisdom is a bit low, you're pretty good with animals, but you don't get in debt with voodoo gods if you have eye insight. We're gonna dump strength, I rewatched the movie, and I guess I just imagined the scene where Dr. Facilier wins a shot put competition. The Shadow Man is a human, and varying humans get a feat at level 1 like the Prodigy feat from Xanathar's Guide to Everything. This gives you proficiency with an extra skill, tool set, and language of your choice. Go for performance, playing cards, and Sylvan for reasons we'll get into later later. You get expertise in a skill, doubling your proficiency bonus with it, take deception, which you'll get in a second. First though, bump your intelligence and charisma with your two free points, take persuasion for your skill of choice, and the charlatan background for deception and sleight of hand. See, I told you you were going to get deception. I wouldn't lie to you, clerics are such an honest class, and this is a cleric build. As long as your god is a voodoo spirit and you worship them out of obligation, also I lied, you're a warlock. Warlocks get two skills from the warlock list, intimidation and arcana would be my picks. I think fey works well for voodoo spells, they're being of chaos who like to mess with the material plane for power, but sometimes also just for lulls. Archfey Warlocks get Fey Presence, letting you summon a visage of your patron to charm or frighten creatures in a 10-foot cube that fail a wisdom saving throw of 8 plus your proficiency bonus for one turn, which isn't actually very long, but it recharges on short rest, so you can probably bamboozle a couple people per day with it. Speaking of things recharging on short rests, Warlocks get spells like Charm Person, which forces a wisdom saving throw on a creature. Failing that, they're charmed by you for an hour, no concentration required, which will help you keep illusions up later. Unseen Servant also doesn't require concentration. It creates an invisible assistant that performs little tasks for you for an hour, so the Shadow Man can have a shadow. Man. For your cantrips, Minor Illusion creates a visual illusion that fits in a 5 foot cube or an audible illusion that's as loud as a scream. Also no concentration, which will be more important later. People can see through it with an investigation check against your spell save, and it doesn't hold up to physical inspection, it's just smoke and mirrors after all. Prestidigitation is a little magical effect, turning out torches, making smells, warming stuff, cooling stuff, get creative with it, and use it to get people on your side, for your friends on the other side. Wait, does that mean they're not on your side? Do they not have your best interest at heart? I don't believe that. They gave you Eldritch Invocations at level 2, which are little mini feats that only Warlocks get. Misty Visions lets you cast Silent Image at will, which creates a 15-foot cubic illusion, then lasts for 10 minutes depending on your concentration. It can't make any noise, but your Minor Illusion can, so you can patch these two together because Minor Illusion doesn't require concentration. This basically just makes you a really good illusionist at will without having to worry about spending spell slots. Armor of Shadows lets you cast Mage Armor on yourself at will, making your AC 13 plus your Dexterity modifier, keeping you safe with a little bamboo. Illusory. For this level spell, Illusory Script lets you write down a message that looks like what you really wrote to some people and something you didn't write to people you choose and it lasts for 10 days. Change a contract or just never write an honest one to begin with. That seems up your alley. You literally work in an alley. Third level warlocks get a Pact Boon, a gift from your buddies in the Voodoo Wild. Pact of the Chain lets you cast Find Familiar as a ritual and expands your familiar options with imps, quasits, sprites, and pseudo dragons, and your familiar can attack people. You can see through its eyes as an action and use it to scan New Orleans for the one that got away. It's not a romantic thing, the prince got away and you need his blood. You also learn second level spells, and Thrall forces a wisdom saving throw on creatures within 60 feet of you. Failing that, they have disadvantage to perceive creatures that aren't you, like your familiar or your unseen servant. Keep them focused on you and your friends can pick pockets, it's pretty nice. 
Fourth level warlocks get an ability score improvement. I bet you can guess what we're putting it in, but it rhymes with Lapisma. That's a type of bug, like a silverfish. Charisma is what you need to invest in though. Illusion casting is a major risk. For this level's spell, suggestion forces a wisdom saving throw on a creature. Failing that, they have to try and complete an action you give them for the next eight hours, depending on your concentration, as long as what you're asking isn't directly harmful to them and sounds reasonable. There's buried treasure here. Dig eight hours worth of hole to find it. That seems reasonable. Fifth level warlocks can learn third level spells. Major image creates an image that fits in a 20 foot cube, but it comes with sounds, smells, temperatures, making it a little more tangible. So hopefully it's a little more convincing. You can also grab another invocation. Voice of the chain master lets you always see through your fine familiar shadow puppet thing, and you can speak through it with your voice. A hamster that sounds like Keith David is probably the best thing I can imagine. Sixth level phalox get misty escape, letting you teleport 60 feet as a reaction after you take damage and you're invisible until the start of your next turn. You can do this once per short rest though i think the most dangerous thing you're encountering is your patron and if they want to collect they're probably going to shut off your power like the electric company would fear is a good spell for keeping other people away from you forcing a wisdom saving throw on creatures in a 30 foot cone in front of you failing that they're frightened for a minute and they have to dash away from you with their action depending on your concentration though they do get to reroll the save once they can't see you but that should be enough time for you to get away you're honestly probably using it to run seventh level warlocks can learn fourth level spells hallucinatory terrain lets you change a 150 foot area of terrain into different terrain at least in appearance like all illusions it can be seen through with an investigation check and this only works on on natural things not buildings and other things still you could use this to throw people off their trail or more accurately your trail for this level's invocation sculptor of flesh lets you cast polymorph once per long rest with a warlock slot letting you turn a creature into a beast of challenge rating equal to or lower than their challenge rating or character level frogs are challenge rating zero so anyone can be a frog they can make a wisdom saving throw to resist this but if they come into your parlor they probably lack insight which is a wisdom skill unfortunately this won't frogify someone totally it ends after an hour or when you drop concentration. They also drop out of it if they run out of hit points, going back to however many hit points they had going in. Frogs have one hit point, so this isn't a great way to permanently make a Prince of Frog. We'll get something better for it later. Eight level warlocks get another ability score improvement so you can cap off your charisma modifier to maximize your trickery. For this level spell, darkness is a second level spell which creates a 15 foot cube of advanced darkness that not even dark vision can see through as you turn the lights out and then something happens. At the end of the song, friends on the other side, the lights go out. They cut away and the next time we see Naveen, he's a frog at the big ball. But Dr. Facilier needs his blood. How did he not catch him? I don't want to get cinema sinzy because, you know, that's bad, but that does bug me. It's still a good movie. Anyway, 9th level warlocks can learn 5th level spells. Contact other plane lets you contact people on the other side. It's risky because you need to make a DC 15 intelligence save or take 6d6 psychic damage and go crazy until you finish a long rest, meaning that you can't speak, read, or take actions. Whoops. But if it doesn't fail, you can ask the other planer friend 5 questions the DM will answer with one word responses. Your friends really just sort of echo or ask you if you're ready. They're not big talkers. You also get another invocation, Devil Sight lets you see in darkness, even the darkness you create with darkness for a distance of 120 feet, which should be pretty useful, even though I guess it didn't help you catch the frog. 10th level phalox get beguiling defenses, making you immune to being charmed, and anytime someone tries to charm you, you get to say no you, forcing a wisdom saving throw on the creature, charming them for a minute if they fail, or until they take damage. All that damage you're dealing. Hey look, we hit level 10 without mentioning a single method of dealing damage. Wonder if that trend's gonna continue. Dominate Person is a great spell for this level, forcing a wisdom saving throw on a creature, failing out there under your control for a minute. You can give them simple instructions or fully take control with an action. Whenever they take damage, they do get to reroll the save though, so try not to get them hurt. 11th level warlocks get a 6th level mystic arcanum spell, which is basically a spell that you can cast once per long rest, which doesn't recharge on short rests like your other spells. Conjure Fae lets you bring some of your friends into the world, or specifically one friend that's a Fae of challenge rating 6 or lower. It's friendly to you and will obey your commands as long as you maintain concentration for the full hour it's there. If you drop it though, it doesn't disappear, instead it hangs out for the rest of the duration and hates you and wants you to suffer. Pretty much how the movie ends. Spoiler. 12th level warlocks get another ability score improvement. Dexterity would be great for better sleight of hand, and it'll make you harder to hit. Getting hit is bad, and your concentration is really important. I guess we could invest in the constitution, but you're pretty frail. How is he that skinny in New Orleans? It's like delicious food turned into a city. For this level's invocation, one with the shadows lets you disappear and become invisible in dim or dark light until you take an action or reaction. Since you can make darkness, you can make invisibility. 
Ain't that nice? 13th level Warlocks get a 7th level Mystic Arcanum slot, and I'm not really into any of these for you. Project Image got added to the Warlock list from the class feature variants on Earth Arcana, creates an illusory duplicate of yourself that you can move twice as fast as you, and you can see through its senses, which is pretty great because it has a range of 500 feet. 500 feet is almost double the size of a football field. It gets even better when you realize that I misread this when I first wrote this script, and the range is 500 miles, so you can go places within 500 miles of New Orleans as long as you've been there before. Honestly, I think New Orleans is probably the coolest place within 500 miles of New Orleans. You could go to Graceland, I guess, if you're an Elvis fan. 14th level Warlocks get Dark Delirium, forcing a wisdom saving throw on a creature. Failing that, they're charmed or frightened of you for a minute and can't see anything except you and the fantastical illusion you're conjuring. It ends early if the creature takes damage and recharges on a short rest. Archfey Warlocks really commit to the bit of short rests that Warlocks are into, even if that means that they don't pack the same amount of punch as some of the other subclasses. 15th level Warlocks get 8th level Mystic Arcanum spells. Glibness makes it so the lowest you can roll on a Charisma check is 15. After that, you still get to add your Ability modifier, and you're proficient with every Charisma skill, meaning the lowest your Charisma check could be is 25. Yikes. You also get another invocation. Visions of Distant Realms lets you cast the Arcane Eye spell at will, which creates a floating invisible eye that you can see through and move 30 feet as an action for up to an hour. It can go anywhere you want on the same plane. So you can scan 18,000 feet from you, which should help you get near psychic levels of information without having to risk going insane by asking your friends. 16th level Warlocks get our last ability score improvement. Again, dexterity is for sleight of hand and your sleight of hand is legendary, or actually, it's not, because nobody realizes you're doing it. 17th level Warlocks get a 9th level Arcanum spell. True Polymorph lets you fully frogify someone. It's like Polymorph, but there's no restriction on what you turn the creature into other than challenge rating, and if they stay in that form for an hour-long duration, they're trapped that way. You could also use this to turn into a dragon, but I think turning your enemy into a frog is kind of the same thing, relatively speaking, right? I think total level 18 is a great time to start multi-classing, don't you? First level rogues get expertise in two skills of their choice. I'd go for sleight of hand and performance because that's the whole reason we're multi-classing into rogue and because the doctor is very good at those things. You also get sneak attack, letting you add a D6 of extra damage when you have advantage on an attack roll or an ally within five feet of the target, which works really well with your familiar. A D6 isn't a lot of damage at this level, but it's the first damage we've mentioned, so it's a lot for you, darn it. Second level rogues get cutting action, letting you dash, disengage or hide as a bonus action, letting you get out of dodge after the jig is up. And it's not dependent on your voodoo pals, so maybe you can use this to get away when they come to collect. Probably not though, this is a rogue level 2 ability and archfey are essentially gods. Our capstone is the third level of rogue, where we can pick up a roguish archetype. And being a thief will buff your sleight of hand, thanks to fast hands. This lets you use a sleight of hand check as a bonus action to pick a lock, disarm a trap, or use an object. You also get second story work, letting you go up walls without spending extra movement and add your dexterity modifier to running long jumps. We don't really see Dr. Facilier climbing walls or anything, but the dude has moves. I bet he could do it if he was hard pressed. Kind of an underwhelming capstone. I just wanted to get true polymorph as quickly as possible because that's like the inciting incident of the movie. So it kind of needs to be a priority. Mix the rogue levels in earlier if you want. Again, this is your build. This is just a guide. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you're tricky. Glibness and expertise with charisma skills pretty much guarantees success with any charisma check. True Polymorph is also an insanely strong spell you can use to nerf your enemies or become a god yourself. Finally, you're really good at recon with find familiar project image and arcane eye to spy at will as you need. For weaknesses, Wisdom saving throws kind of shut you down. Druids, clerics, monks, and rangers all just chuckle while you try and charm them. Also, some things are just straight up immune to being charmed, so too bad a lot of your spells depend on that. Finally, you don't really deal damage without polymorphing, and changing yourself isn't really in character. But you can be flexible, and you might have to be to satisfy your benefactors. Charm people, swindle them, and get everything done outside of combat. Just remember, you're not the only one manipulating people, and the people pulling your strings aren't the type to be disappointed. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon for character sheets and a vote in the poll for Garnet, Amethyst, or Pearl, but not Steven.